giving a speech in Congress as a disrespect to the U.S. president to lobbying politicians to derail the process, Netanyahu and the pro-Israel lobby in the United States have done their best to make their displeasure known and felt over the nuclear deal between Iran and the P5 plus 1 group. While the Obama administration itself mulls sanctions over Iran's defensive missile capabilities, in the latest anti-Iran move, the Republican-led House Foreign Affairs Committee on Thursday approved legislation that makes it harder to lift anti-Iran sanctions as agreed upon in the deal. Where does this leave the much-applauded JCPOA? Was it all a charade for the United States? That and more in this debate. Let me now introduce our guests for this edition of the debate. We're joined by former U.S. Marine, Mr. Ken O'Keefe, who is joining us live from London. And we're also joined by freelance journalist, Mr. Philippe Asselin, who is joining us live from Los Angeles. Gentlemen, thank you both for joining us for this edition of the debate. Mr. O'Keefe, I'll start with you. How do you feel about thank the you. restrictions on lifting sanctions against Iran as called for by the nuclear deal? Well, it's yet another uh, expose of the completely bought and paid off uh, reality of the U.S. government. The fact is that the U.S. government is run from enemies within the state. The so-called Israeli lobby is uh, part and parcel with the ruler, the ruling class of America. The policies do not reflect the interests of America. Uh, this ongoing charade that Iran is developing nuclear weapons, which has no basis in fact, and we can look to the historical record of Iran, one of the most peaceful nations on the planet for centuries. No war at all other than one war imposed on it, uh, the Iran-Iraq war with our attack dog Saddam Hussein. There is no physical evidence to establish any kind of policy of, of producing weapons of mass destruction or nuclear weapons for that matter. Even intelligence services in, in the United States and Israel confirm this at top levels. So this charade is being played out for one reason and one reason only because this charade is necessary in order to carry out Israeli policy which is never-ending war, constant tensions, the threat of a third, new, uh, third world war on so many different levels, the policies that we're carrying out in Syria, the policies we've carried out in Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, the whole region is basically Israeli policy and the United States carries out Israeli policy and there are just so many examples of this, it's beggar's belief that anybody doesn't figured it out by now. So this is very consistent with the way the American government functions. They're being ordered to scuttle the agreement and to carry on the charade that Iran actually poses a legitimate threat and is trying to produce nuclear weapons, when in fact its leadership at the top levels has said very clearly that this would be an affront to God. Unlike us, who have no compunction against producing weapons of mass destruction and using them all over the world, the Iranians seem to think that this is not actually in line with a good, God-fearing, uh, religious, spiritual value. So it's really uh, uh, just another example of the corruption of the United States government and the enemy within. Mr. Asselin, how do you feel about that as well? Um, is this the Israel lobby talking? I feel that the uh, comments by my co-panelists were amusing more than the ones I usually hear on this channel. This cartoonish fantasy that it's so one-sided I don't even know where to begin to answer. Um, I know it's practice to blame Israel for everything. Uh, Israel threw everything it had to fighting this deal along with other countries in the region because Iran, the Iranian regime cannot really be trusted. But it lost that fight and the deal is moving forward. The problem now is that Iran, and I don't know why, irrationally, on top of saying death to America and death to Israel on a weekly or daily basis, has been showcasing its ballistic missile program, making threats. Uh, including ballistic missiles that can carry nuclear warheads. So you'd have to wonder, why do they need ballistic missiles that can carry nuclear warheads if they're not developing nuclear weapons? They've been doing this in the last few months and this week. So yeah, the American government is going to respond. Um, Mr. Asselin, uh, those um, ballistic missiles you're speaking about, Iran very clearly said, cannot carry nuclear warheads. Um, uh, but I wanted to put some of your points that you made there to Mr. O'Keefe. Mr. O'Keefe, um, uh, Mr. Asselin, they're saying that Israel lost the battle in trying to derail this, uh, this nuclear deal. How do you feel about that? Well, how can that be concluded? The, the fact is that the sanctions are still in place. The fact is that uh, these policies are under direct threat from this new legislation. And the fact is that uh, until there's actual physical movement in that direction that the sanctions are very much in place. So 
The idea that they are uh, being relieved is, is mere talk. Uh, the United States says a lot of things. It never says what it really intends to do. Um, so uh, talk is talk. Uh, action is a completely different thing. I heard just a bit at the tail the end about the, uh, the... I heard a little bit at the end. I was Unfortunately, the audio cut out, but I heard a bit about Iran having uh, missiles, mid-range missiles that can carry nuclear warheads, and as the commentator has said, that's, that's just untrue. It's, it's either you're misinformed or you're lying about it. It's not true at all. And even if Iran had the capacity to use nuclear weapons, which it does not, and it doesn't seek it, but even if it did, could you blame it? It is surrounded by a very hostile enemy, the United States, with bases and troops all around it, and just like Russia is under constant threat from this imperial monster which concocts all sorts of nonsense to continuously justify policies of never-ending war, the lesson to Saddam Hussein in Iraq was don't give up your weapons of mass destruction. That won't help you one bit. So really the only defense a nation has in this world as we teach it to the rest of the world, like North Korea apparently got the lesson, get yourself a nuclear weapon so that you can defend yourself. Do we hassle North Korea nearly as much as we hassle Iran? No, we don't. And part of the reason why we seemingly will not attack uh, North Korea is because they can actually defend themselves, whereas we in the West, and the American Empire in particular, are a bunch of cowards who constantly attack people who have comparatively no defenses at all. We are the classic bully on the world stage. We point the finger at others talking about weapons of mass destruction when we are the biggest producer of weapons of mass destruction. We use more weapons of mass destruction than anybody else and we sell them and distribute them more than anybody else. So how in the hell does anybody take the United States seriously when it points the finger at anybody else? If any nation should be disarming, it should be the United States. Mr. Asselin, I, I'm, I want to focus in on the United States and its, its place here because, you know, many people, especially where I'm standing in Iran, mistrust the U.S. because of its track record here. And certainly now that we're hearing about, A, the administration wanting to put sanctions on this country, and secondly, now the House of Representatives approving these limits on lifting sanctions, even though those, those sanctions lifting was in the nuclear deal at the JCPOA, how exactly can anybody trust the U.S. To to ever live up to any deal it signs? Well, you'll have to ask the Iranians why they trust the U.S. They signed the deal with the U.S. and the rest of the world, so that's not exactly for me to argue. The JCPOA does not envisage lifting of sanctions until Iran carries out its obligations. It's in the process now of carrying out some of them, like getting rid of the enriched uranium. But it's violating the ones on ballistic missiles, including missiles reportedly that can carry nuclear weapons. I trust press agencies and intelligence reports more often. Now you're saying, how can Iran trust the U.S.? How can the U.S. or anybody else trust Iran? Weekly sermons by the supreme leader uh, turning Islam, which should be a religion of peace, into something really ugly by calling for death to Israel and death to America for 30 years, more than 30 years, uh, almost 40 now, um, showcasing ballistic missiles, supporting protests to burn embassies. This is not responsible behavior. And the new sanctions that are being discussed are to limit the windfall that Iran's going to get prevent them from funding terrorist groups that are wreaking havoc in the Middle East and all over the world, like Hezbollah that is holding Lebanon like a mafia that is helping kill people in Syria and other groups. Now, for Iran to oppose Sunni terrorist groups, but at the same time be the main proponent of Shiite terrorist groups and some Sunni terrorist groups like Hamas, is a farce. So I'm not going to engage more of what your, uh, the co-panelist is saying. I think he needs a psychologist more than to be on TV because of the screaming and the clear emotions there. But in terms of your questions, that's my answer. The sanctions are there because of Iranian actions. That's all. Mr. O'Keefe, how do you feel about that? <laughs> well, it's like an alternate universe, isn't it? I mean, the whole world can see who is a real threat. And to be talking about uh, uh, Iranian terrorism while we, the United States, supply Saudi Arabia with the latest weapons uh, deal we did, $60 billion worth of weapons, to a nation that is provably financing so-called Al-Qaeda and ISIS for decades. For you, if you're going to say what you say, I'm not getting angry, I'm having a good laugh at the nonsense at what you say. Do you want to deny that Saudi Arabia I is the primary funder of terrorism in the region? You want to deny that Saudi Arabia are good friend and ally who we primary. just sold 60 billion? 
Yes, you don't want to acknowledge that, do you? You have no problem with Saudi um, Arabia and the sixty question, billion dollars we sell to them? Why are you interrupting me? Why? Are you asking me a question? Why? Why do you make are you personal attacks? Are you asking me a question? Are you asking me a question? Yeah, I'm asking uh, you a question. Do you deny that ridiculous. Saudi Arabia? Listen, right, let me ask answer? the question so you can answer it. Do you deny that Saudi Arabia is the okay. primary funder of so-called Al Qaeda and ISIS and Al Nusra Front, along with the Wahhabi doctrine, the Takfiri doctrine that is playing out throughout the Middle East? Do you agree that our best friend and ally, Saudi Arabia, is the primary funder and motivator of these terrorists running around the region chopping off heads? Do you agree with that? So I had to turn the volume down again. Uh, I have nobody I think is ever going to deny that the Gulf countries and Saudi Arabia have been the main proponents of Sunni Salafist ideology and that they're now funding either the government or people in the kingdom and other countries in the Arab funding ISIS. That doesn't give a pass or get out of jail free card <laughs> to Iran funding Assad and Hezbollah and Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad. If you're against funding terrorism on one side, be against funding it on the other side. I have no problem criticizing Saudi Arabia for what it's doing. Where is, the, where is the evidence and where is the case to be brought against any of these people that you're accusing? Do you realize that Osama bin Laden was never even charged I don't understand your with question. any crime related to 9-11? You're, you're an ignorant and you're an unpolite man. I sit and listen to your nonsense and you just speak over me when I make clear facts to you. Osama bin Laden was never even yes. charged with any crime related to 9-11 because the FBI acknowledged publicly that there was no credible evidence linking him to the crime. And yet, you probably believe that he's responsible, even though there's no actual evidence. All it is is a mainstream media, which is a bunch of prostitutes, and corrupted intelligence agencies, which you cited as your source of information earlier in this program. It's these corrupt institutions that you're citing to believe what you believe, which is a joke, and the whole world can see it. The United States is the biggest purveyor of violence on the planet. It is sending weapons of mass destruction all around the world. It is destroying lives and blowing apart children and women every day with its bombs. And yet you have the nerve to point the finger at Iran, a nation which hasn't indulged in a war for many centuries and actually okay, has I an get, active the policy of respecting life move on? by not carrying um, out gen Gentlemen, if, I, if you would allow me to come in, I do apologize. I wanted to they have steer the conversation back to what we were talking about, if, if you both allow me. Mr. Russell, Line. Um, earlier you mentioned that um, why yes. should the U.S. trust Iran, uh, but certainly from, again, where I'm standing in Iran itself, there are, many very, there are many people who are very critical, in fact, of the Iranian government and the compromises that it put forth to be able to get this deal. So when we talk about why should the U.S. trust Iran, Iran, as you said, is implementing its side of the deal so far. The United States seems to only be wanting to talk Parts about more it. and more sanctions. Um, again, I don't see the, 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 the equality or the, or the comparison there being a fair one. Well, I don't agree with you. I think uh, I, I can understand that the Iranians have distrust of America, given the history, given the propaganda in the regime. And for the reasons I mentioned, the Americans have a suspicion of Iran. I mean, there's hostages there now, uh, the, the, the imprisonment of, of journalists, things of that kind, but also big violations of UN resolutions like the ballistic missiles, the weekly declarations of death to America, the support for Hezbollah and Hamas. I mean, why? If Iran really wants to come back into the family of nations, the Iranian people are great people. If they really want to come back and be, be reintegrated into the family of nations, what is this logic? It's just placating a few hardliners to please come in a maybe, but he's on his way out. What is the logic here? And how does this fit with the, the notion that Islam is this religion that's supposed to bring peace to the world? It, it, the supreme leader who's supposed to be a religious authority supervising the country makes the most vile pronouncement and supports groups that target women and children. This is shameful, it's dishonorable, and it's the reason why the West has a very hard time supporting Iran. I mean, Iran shoots its own people in the streets for, for, for protesting elections. Um, a, lot, a lot of what you said, Mr. Asalan, I'm sure I could argue against, but I just want to clarify one thing that Ayatollah al Khamenei supported the Iranian government throughout this nuclear process and supported the nuclear deal that came out. I just wanted to clarify that part. Um, Mr. O'Keefe, um, Mr. O'Keefe, I'm wondering about um, what you feel about what Mr. Asalan there said, saying that, again, is the Iranians who cannot be trusted. I didn't say that. Well, you know, I, I mean... I said both sides have distrust. Okay, well, you know, well, <laughs> Iran, uh, he, um, amongst the other things he said, is that Iran is, is pushing terrorism around the world. Iran's fighters have been fighting against ISIS, and it's America 
that has been supplying cover politically, militarily for Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and other Gulf states along with Turkey, who we all know at this point is shuttling these head choppers across the border all the time with even Erdogan's son very much implicated in the oil sales for ISIS and that much of this oil is heading to Israel. This is all provable. It's in the public record at this point. We've got Jordan, which is supplying uh, bases for training for these so-called moderate rebels, which never existed. And yet the problem is Iran. This is uh, flipping the world upside down. It's pure Orwellian doublespeak. It is an insult, quite frankly, to those of us who are paying attention. Is and the Trump entire an world knows full well that I the mean. biggest threat to the safety and security, once again, impolite, ignorant man. And it's the whole world who acknowledges full well that the United <laughs> States is the biggest hypocrite on Sorry. the planet and that the United States poses a legitimate threat to everyone's safety and security, especially with its support of nations like Saudi Arabia and Israel, which continues to carry out an active policy of ethnic cleansing against the Palestinian people. Literally, the United States, and, Israel, and, and Britain the holds Jedi the true axis the of evil. And, uh, Global warming. Mr. Rasselin, if, if I, if I may ask fault. you this, Mr. Rasselin. Uh, please? Sure, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yes, sir. But I think my, my, my arguments are being mischaracterized. Nobody doubts that ISIS is an awful, terrible terrorist group and that they're committing atrocities across the Middle East. But the, the, the co-panelist wants to posit this black and white narrative. I am fully in support of condemning ISIS and the countries that support it for supporting it. I agree that Turkey's relationship with ISIS has been very, very uh, questionable and, and, not, and not straightforward and the support for ISIS is despicable. But if you're going to oppose Islamist terrorists on one side, you can't support them on the other. Hezbollah are an Islamist terrorist group. Hamas are the exact same as ISIS. <laughs> they just have minor differences in terms of method. So if you're going to condemn one side, condemn the other. And to go back to the question of trust, I'm saying there is naturally distrust on both sides. I said the Iranians distrust the Americans because of history and, and the propaganda and the regime and what they see happening around them. And the Americans distrust the Iranians for what they've done and said repeatedly in the last few months and years. Mr. Asselin, I'm, I'm wondering but now, at this point... But now I know the co-panelist wants to blame Israel for everything. Is if you allow me, Mr. Asselin, I'm, I'm wondering at this point, when we talk about yes, sir. who would benefit if the nuclear deal were to fall apart, who do you think that would be? If the nuclear deal were to fall apart and there were no alternative, I don't think anybody would benefit. Um, the Iranians would continue to develop their nuclear program. The region would be probably caught in an arms race. Uh, you would probably have more instability. The Saudis using proxy wars to try to weaken uh, Iran. Uh, the Americans would be forced into some kind of reaction. It might be knee-jerk. I think if the deal breaks down now with no alternative plan, it's bad for everybody. A bad for everybody, Not Mr. O'Keefe. How do you feel about that? Because, because again, what it's meant to produce. As, as we spoke of at the beginning of this show, um, it seems Israel would be happy if it breaks apart. Well, if you take a look at the Greater Israel Project, and for people who don't know what that means, Google Greater Israel Project. And if you want to look at Odid Yanan's strategy for Israel in Google the 1980s, you'll find that actually what we see playing out in the Middle East right now is perfectly in line with Israel's long-term objective, which is to expand into Syria, into Lebanon, Iraq, Egypt, Jordan, and parts of Saudi Arabia. This is the long-term goal of the psychopaths who basically are the forerunners to all of these policies which favor Israel. All of this is in line with the agenda of Israel to get the Arabs and the Muslims to bleed each other, that term is actually used, and to effectively balkanize the region so that it will be in a fractured, weakened state where sectarian hatred is rife, and in this fractured, weakened state, Israel eventually intends to expand. So the policies are not actually a failure, it's just that those who are in the position to carry out these policies are lying about what they really are. And I will cite the 22 American service members a day who continue to commit suicide for having been sent to fight off wars for Israel, specifically in Iraq, where they committed such horrendous atrocities that in places like Fallujah, for instance, the people are being told, women in particular, not to have children because the area is so badly polluted with depleted uranium and other weapons that the birth defects and cancers are so high to not even have children. This is the type of policy that America has been carrying out for a long time now, and American sons and daughters have been used for cannon fodder for these damn policies. And this man sitting there in Los Angeles is basically a parrot 
for these insane policies and he's filling the people with all sorts of nonsense such as Iran, Iran's mythical nuclear weapons program which simply does not exist with no evidence and also claiming that Hezbollah and other entities are terrorists of the same order of ISIS which is beyond ridiculous. But this kind of stuff can pass in an ignorant population which still sadly exists in the United States but thankfully more and more Americans are waking up to this nonsense because again the enemy is inside the gate and using American sons and daughters as cannon fodder. Okay, unfortunately, we'll have to leave that as our final word um, there. We have run out of time, um, but of course, we do appreciate both of your contributions to this conversation. That was former U.S. Marine, Mr. Ken O'Keefe, who was speaking to us live from London. And we were also joined by freelance journalist, Mr. Philippe Azuline, who had been speaking to us live from Los Angeles. And of course, viewers, we do appreciate you joining us as well. Until next time, good night.